Final Cut Pro 10.8 finally dropped and there's a whole bunch of new machine learning features that I know you're gonna love. Plus they took away one feature that I think some of you are gonna be a little bit upset about. We're gonna get to that at the end of this video, but before you update, make sure you navigate to your Final Cut Pro app. In your Finder window, right click and compress it so you can save the previous version of Final Cut Pro for later just in case you need it. Also, FYI, Final Cut Pro for iPad just got a big update too. I've got a video about that, but let's jump right into 10.8. I'm gonna start with what I think you guys are gonna be most excited about, and then I'm gonna show you what I'm most excited about, and then we'll get into everything else. Let's do it. The first new feature is called Enhanced Light and Color, and it's a machine learning powered tool to help you automatically color correct your shots. Let me show you how it works. So here we've got a shot of this woman coming down the stairs and I can tell you we shot this in log and if I open my info inspector, you'll see that I have the appropriate camera LUT applied. So that's where we are in our color correction process. And there's a couple different ways to access enhanced light and color. The first one is to hit the drop down next to the magic wand underneath your viewer and select enhanced light and color. And you can see after just a second, my shot has a little more contrast and it is more saturated and the color adjustments have been applied to my clip in the inspector. Let me move to the next clip to show you the other way to apply enhance light and color. You can just go directly into the color inspector and apply those color adjustments. And this menu should look pretty familiar to you. It is the normal color adjustments, but there's a couple of extra buttons here. So if I hit this enhance light and color big button at the top, it's going to apply the machine learning color correction to both my contrast and my color. If I want to disable it, I just hit the button again. If I just want to use machine learning to adjust my contrast, I would just hit this button here across from lights. Let me disable that. And if I just wanted to use the machine learning color tool, I would hit this magic wand. Let me enable both here and show you that I find that this color correction does skew a little bit pink. Let me close that browser and open my scopes and show you what I mean. I'm just gonna isolate this woman's skin. And yeah, you can see here on the vector scope that she's really pink. If I disable the machine learning color correction, you can see that now her skin is more in line. So that's just something for you to think about. Make sure you're keeping an eye on your scopes. But I will say this machine learning color correction is a good starting point. So from here, I could maybe dial down my saturation and dial down the tint on my midtones and bring it to a place that I feel like is a little bit more true to life. Let me know in the comments if you feel like enhanced light and color is making your shots a little bit pink too. I'm really curious about what your experience is. By the way guys, Motion also got enhanced light and color. You can find it under filters, color, and color adjustments and there is the same menu in your inspector in Motion. All right, back to Final Cut Pro. Let me show you the drop that I was really excited to see. Here's a shot from an operating room. If you look at my video inspector, you can see I've applied a camera LUT, a creative LUT, color adjustments, and a color board with a color mask. And on this next shot from the same scene, I don't have any effects applied. Watch this, you guys, you're gonna love it. I'm gonna select the shot with my corrections. And from my inspector, I'm gonna drag an effect and drop it to this other shot. How cool is that? But you don't have to do just one effect at a time. Let me undo that. And I'm going to select my first clip again. And in my video inspector, I'm going to select all of these effects, either by clicking on the top one, holding down shift and clicking on the bottom one to select all four, or I can hold down the command key and just select the ones I want. And now I can drag all of them to that shot. Amazing, I love this addition. Why didn't we think of this sooner? But that's not the only thing new in the inspector. Let me show you what else is new. So like I said, this color board has a color mask on it. And what I did was I selected the blues in the shot and I kind of enhanced them a little bit. But if I came back to this project later, I'd have to kind of click around to figure out what this color board was doing, right? Watch this. I can now double click on the color board and rename that effect. So now you can stay better organized in your inspector. I love this new feature. And by the way, you guys, have you stopped by my website, jenjager.com lately? There's a whole bunch of good stuff on there for you to check out, like my full courses on Final Cut Pro and Apple Motion, plus my course Agency Kickstart, which reveals all my secrets for running a successful production company. My production company is about to hit our 15 year anniversary this fall, I cannot believe it. But there's also some other freebies on there, like custom overlays you can import into Final Cut Pro to help make sure your short form content is title safe and these free subscribe buttons all at jenjager.com. Now let's move on to the next new machine powered tool. I know you're going to be really excited about it. it's called smooth slow-mo. 
Here's a shot of this hockey player in real time. This clip was recorded at 30 frames per second. If I slow it down to 25%, as expected, it doesn't look great, super herky-jerky. Now let's apply the new smooth slow-mo effect to it. So back in the retime menu, I'm going to navigate down to smooth slow-mo and set this to 25%. And then, wow, you guys, check out these results. Now you may be wondering how this compares to the optical flow setting in video quality. Here's a side-by-side. -side. You're getting a lot of distortion with that optical flow. It's definitely not as clean looking. It's also important to note that even though the smooth slow-mo menu has retiming in increments of 50%, 25% or 10%, you can still apply a custom speed, let's say 42. And then back in the retime menu under video quality, you have this new option, best machine learning. That's the same technology as smooth slow-mo, so you can just apply it here too. Let me show you a few more examples of smooth slow-mo in action. Here's this woman playing tennis in real time. Here she is in 25% speed, not great. Here she is with the optical flow video quality applied to the 25% retiming. And here she is with smooth slow-mo also at 25% speed. Great result. But if I'm being honest, it's not perfect. Here's this gentleman running. Here he is at 25% speed. Here he is with the optical flow. His legs are definitely looking very funky. And even with smooth slow-mo, you're getting some weird distortion on his legs. So it's not perfect, but when it does work, it works awesome. All right, the next feature you need to know about is that we got a scrolling timeline button at the top of the timeline toolbar. So you can enable and disable scrolling with the push of a button, we love this. Other new features relate to organization in your projects. So let's start here in the browser. If we click the magnifying glass to search and then open up the HUD with this icon here, you can now search by starts with or ends with to find your clips, that is new. Also in the timeline index, you now have advanced search tools. Just open up that index, drop down next to the magnifying glass, and now you can identify clips with not just duplicate ranges, but missing media, missing effects, any video or audio effects or retiming applied. So if I hit missing media, it's gonna bring me right to this missing file. One thing I did notice about this advanced search tool is that it doesn't catch absolutely everything. For instance, in this timeline here, you can see that this shot has a missing custom LUT. But in my timeline index, this clip is not identified. I think because the effect is actually there, it's just the assigned LUT is missing. So if you're using custom LUTs in this way, you'll still wanna take a close look at your timeline before you export because this timeline index search won't catch it. One other cool thing about the new search tools in the timeline index is that you can now search user created roles. So for instance, I created this role here called on cam. And if I search in my timeline index for on cam, it identifies all of my on cam clips with that role. In addition to these new machine learning powered tools, Final Cut Pro 10.8 also got some bug fixes. They also improved and added support for some Canon codecs, but the big feature they got rid of was support for burning disks. And I know this is gonna break some hearts. I see you guys in the Final Cut Pro Facebook groups. I know some people are still burning to Blu-ray and if that's you, I think you're gonna need to find a different delivery or archiving system for yourself. As far as the Final Cut Pro for iPad app, huge new developments in that today. I've got a video here to show you what I think about it. Thanks for hanging out, you guys. Thanks to everyone who watches all the way to the end. I'll see you again.